and welcome to Mercy TV Live, your medical cannabis call-in show. Greetings, my name is Perry, and I'll be your host for this segment of Mercy Live. With me are special guest Elvie Musica and patient resource coordinator Sonny Watkins. We are a medical cannabis uh, resource group. We are, in fact, an international group. And uh, just the other day, I got a call from someone out in Louisiana seeking help. And one of his options was to some find someplace locally that uh, would suit his purposes. And I thought of the affirmative defense that was available to folks in Florida. And that defense is uh, available to folks in Florida today, courtesy of our special guest here this evening. LV Musica is one of four medical cannabis, federal medical cannabis patients in the United States. And yes, you heard correctly, that is federal, the same federal government that says marijuana is not medicine. Well, uh, we have somebody that uh, is here ready to testify as soon as she gets a chance that that is indeed not the case, that cannabis is not only medicine, it is safe, effective medicine, and people should have access to it. Uh, LV, thanks for uh, coming uh, up here uh, for our show this evening. And um, uh, we wanted to uh, you know, take a, a few moments to talk you know, about the federal medical cannabis uh, program, the CIND that you're a part of because we've always been warning people on the show uh, every chance we get about their attempts to rescind the program here in Oregon doing much in the same way that they did with the CIND the federal program they put all kinds of restrictions on it so nobody uh, could join it and then said well we have to shut it down because nobody's interested and uh, that's kind of the same thing they try to do with the fee increases that uh, we saw here in Oregon this year well that's quite a bit of uh, information there that um you're talking about the federal law, you know, this this has been a research uh, program, supposedly with the government, our government, with your tax dollars, I say yours, I didn't get the chance to work too much uh, because the powdered li lady with the powder nose kept saying, just say no, and I was supposed to be looking for work, so um, uh -huh. that didn't happen. So, in the, because I had the glaucoma and uh -huh. I knew that I was nothing, absolutely nothing they had was helping me. So everything went straight to cannabis was the only thing I found to help me. But in the meanwhile, I, w I was losing my sight because I had no access to it. So I definitely have worked on all your initiatives here in Oregon, before that in California, mm -hmm. several times there. So, uh, and but by then I had become a legal recipient after I went through a trial in South Florida. Norman Kent was my attorney, my wonderful doctor, the, the best ophthalmologist in the world, testified with a stack of records this high, and the judge concluded that for me not to have smoked marijuana would have constituted insanity, knowing what I knew then, mm, which is excellent. nothing compared to what I know now. But that trial established a defense for the state of Florida, and I'll always thank God for having that opportunity, because that's really special to me. I know what it was like to be a criminal, wondering what would happen to you right through the minute when the judge decided that mm. no, that wasn't right. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, and this uh, springboarded you into joining the federal, uh, getting with the federal program then? Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Randall, who also, like myself, had glaucoma, in fact, testified that my testimony was a deja vu of his story no. um, because he, too, was a glaucoma patient who found out from the very beginning that marijuana was the only thing that really helped. And here's the interesting part. I couldn't get in that program, oh, no matter how hard I was trying, and I was working with a research uh, center out of the University of Miami, and of course this part that the government grows is at the University of Mississippi. They had even told some of my doctors there was no more federal programs. That, of course, was a lie. Hmm. But after my trial, the whole South Florida public was really, really behind me in ways I had never, ever dreamed in, ever. And uh, their support was what carried after my trial and mm -hmm. continued the pressure for them to let me enter that program that at that time only had two men in it. Yeah. Well, see, and this is why we do the show, because a lot of people out here watching the show don't realize cannabis is an alternative medicine. And you know, if you have been sick and you've had a lot of pills and these people keep telling you, you need to try this and you need to try that, I understand, she understands, we all understand. That's why we're doing the show. Cannabis is an alternative medicine. If you haven't used it, you should find somebody and look into your condition. 
there's a number of things. You can get a hold of us at the website. You can get a hold of us at the office. You can call us tonight. Our number here is 503-588-6444. You know what? Ask anybody. Ask. We're all up here ready to help you guys because there's a lot of people, just like she said, people don't realize that their condition could actually be helped with cannabis. Everybody thinks you got to smoke it. You don't have to smoke it. You can eat it. You can rub it on you. You can use hot air. It's called vaporizing. And it's just hot air that is pushed through the cannabis. These are the things, you guys, that we're teaching with this TV show. Please, you know, Elvi, thank you so much. These people that we're trying to get to here, they don't realize all the information we have. How many places have you went to do your talks and stuff? I became legal in, in, in October of 88. Oddly enough, just a month before, the chief administrative law judge for the DEA had told his own agency mm -hmm. that for a government to withhold this medicine from patients and not relieve their suffering was unreasonable, arbitrary, and capricious. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to speak about my personal case, my win in Florida, and to other young people. And I was praying, though, because all of a sudden, I wanted to help sick people, but I did not want to contribute to what was going on with the drugs. And all of a sudden, all our cities had all this influx of drugs. Nobody knew where the Iran-Contra was happening and what was happening to us then. Mm -hmm. We just kept having the problems, the consequences. So I wanted to not get in the middle of that, so I prayed. Well, be careful what you pray for. 20 minutes later, I was invited to my first rally ever. And that's when I began to discover the great history behind our cannabis hemp, how this was legal as far back as 1619 in Virginia, Jamestown, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Not to grow hemp was against the law. Right. And all of the things I found out, but most of all, I found out we were arresting 300,000 of us every year over a plant that had never killed anyone. And I didn't want any part of the karma that comes back to, to a country that does that to its own people because I understand that if I am not part of the solution, I am the problem, right. and that applies to all of us. And and you and and since and that was back then that number is even higher now. So. No, that of course now that number has almost tripled. It's over eight hundred thousand, and we do two thousand people every day in our United States, and we don't find out what happened to those people because believe me, there are severe consequences to this lie. Uh, you end up losing your housing or your kids or both your jobs. You don't dare talk about it. Well, that's one of the things, you know, we talked about this earlier. The main thing that everybody out watching the show, besides being sick, they're having this fear. And the fear that we're talking about is, do I get away? Do I have some uh, quality of life? Because we that are sick are trying to have the quality of life. And this fear that she's talking about mm -hmm. is God is so wrapped up, you know, Please, I feel sorry for you, for your fear. We are trying to help others get out and not have the fear, but you know what? The main thing is to have a quality of life and be able to use some cannabis right. and at least feel better. Well, and they have really nothing to fear but fear That's itself. Right. You know, there's the truth is that cannabis is safe, effective medicine. Uh, while there is law enforcement out and about trying to, to, um, to Tell you otherwise. Yeah, and, and, and in fact, you know, there's state people out there busting folks, you know, when they're in compliance and stuff. We got the federal offensive on us. And so fee folks should not fear, they should not get out of the program and all. Instead, they should like register, vote, and make sure that everybody, all of our leaders, all those police, you know, leaders and representatives are uh, folks that we, uh, uh, that respect the law, you know. And um, we had an opportunity to. Uh, do just that, you know, this afternoon, which is one of the reasons LB was up here in town. We had, uh, we got a chance to go to a debate for the Attorney General's office. And um, the debate uh, this year is, is basically between two Democratic candidates. So folks want to get involved and participate in the uh, May 15th uh, primary elections to uh, be involved with it. But um, it can, it involves uh, one candidate uh, who is a uh, uh, 
formerly a judge, uh, Ellen Rosenblum. She's uh, you know from the Portland area there, uh, where she has worked. And um, I actually have some history with uh, Judge Rosenblum. Uh, back in uh, 98, while we were getting the, the law passed, we had one of our comrades going through uh, the court system because he was foolish enough to grow before the law, thinking that he might be grandfathered in or at least get some coverage in there, but was busted and, and went before the judge. And um, uh, the law passed during his thing, and she allowed him to use cannabis while on, while the, uh, during his trial and so forth. Um, so I remember that thing back from that time frame with that, uh, with that uh, candidate. Further, she said that uh, she respects the program and she's not going to be using precious uh, state resources, um, you know, going after medical cannabis. She says we have much better, uh, higher priorities, aside from her respect for the program. On the uh, other hand, we have this candidate, Dwight Holton, who sent us a letter uh, as a U.S. Uh, district attorney uh, told us to stop our uh, evil uh, dispensary drug dealing, which we weren't doing, and uh, made some other statements that weren't quite uh, true. Uh, so we got a chance to go there to the debate, and um, LV has, has a very, uh, very uh, direct case to, to ask both, both candidates, you know, something to, to apply to medical cannabis and states' rights uh, due to the, the incident back in Ontario, back in uh, uh, September of 11, which seem, may seem like a long time ago, right. but it's still fresh on enough folks Minds of folks who were adversely affected by it, I'm sure. But we can have, we tell them? Well, we have all of these things going on, and people out here are, are not getting the information. We're the only ones that are able to give them this information. And is there, like, the websites that they should be looking at, like our website? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Folks can uh, read all about LV's uh, story, both the incident we're talking about and her history with the Federal Medical Cannabis Program at www.mercycenters.org. And uh, there you can also find links to uh, her web page and other means to uh, communicate with LV and uh, hear more about her uh, interesting story. Um, but I wanted to uh, talk about the uh, case um, where LV uh, and some other folks who had uh, their cards were stopped by a state patrol uh, trooper and uh, uh, all of their medicine was confiscated, even though LV had her federal card and her state card. And um, <laughs> the the sad uh, slash interesting thing was that in in the in the getting your stuff back, you were told that you, uh, you were or that that they were ordered to do this by the feds. You know, and it was an interesting case of you know, hey, they work for us. You know, it's states' rights as well as uh, respect for the. Um, state program by the state employees. Well, that was really interesting because everybody's medicine, medicine got taken away, but then they came back with everybody's medicine. Oh, good. Except my prescription, and I actually have a prescription. <laughs> so, I found that really interesting, and I started to put up an argument. I thought, that's ridiculous. If, if people are educated, all is fine, but if there's the ignorance, I'm in trouble, so just let them do whatever. I'll get it back tomorrow. But sure as, you know, on next morning there we were picking it up. And when we did, we, we, I was telling uh, Mr. Holden today, I said, I got an apology when I went to receive my medicine. And he says, oh, good. I said, no, that's not the point. I want to tell you that I'm a little confused because along with the apology came information that federal higher-ups were telling our authorities here in Oregon that they were to confiscate continue to harass patients and confiscate all their medicine, even if they were complying with state laws. And I said, I find that really puzzling because I had just read an article where I understand my president had told them the exact opposite. So is, is someone uh, betraying my president or just writing their own laws? What's going on here? But I never got that far out, and I never get this answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we'll uh, go online and try to get that question before on that, because we definitely want an answer on that. I think that's something that reflects very, uh, very highly on, uh, pardon the pun, well, I, I would Attorney leave General this. Show. He's running now, and he's making his statement, and Ellen is making hers, and she's been a judge who's really been through this from the very beginning, an Oregonian since she's 17 years old, from the U of O. I'm partial to this lady. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what people might not understand, you think the conversation we're having about this might not really have any pertinence to you, 
The real deal is this. You and all your family and all their friends and all their friends and family really need to vote for this lady. The amounts of uh, laws and support we're going to have as a cannabis community in the state of Oregon are really going to matter with this lady. See, we will get support through her, and without her, we'll get absolutely none, and we'll lose ground. All you people are thinking, man, these high raises, the fee raises, and all the loss, and everything that's going down, if this lady doesn't get voted in, then we'll keep going just like that down. But the fact of the matter is there's enough of us, enough patients, enough people that use cannabis, enough people that know people that use cannabis, and enough of those families and friends. We all vote. We need to vote for her and make sure that this lady is the one that mm -hmm. comes for the state of Oregon. We need her, and it's like, can you think of any other things that have been that important? What else? Really, you, there's one thing that uh -oh. our audiences have to really start Come paying back. attention. One Two minute. thousand a people a day arrested for <clears throat> marijuana, please. Absolutely. Uh, hold on a sec. We have a caller. Go ahead, caller. Happy 420. Happy, Happy 420. 420. Hey, I was just down at the Capitol today on the Capitol steps with LV, and it was a good thing. And I just wanted to say thank you for all your guys' hard work. And I was wondering, um, I'm... I'm an independent, so what do I have to do to in order to vote for this lady? Oh, well, you want to register as Democrat. You need to do that before April 24th. And then I can register back? Yes, after the May 15th election, you can then vote whoever you wish and, and change your registration also. Cool, and I also heard you guys were having a camp out. Yes, the Wake and Bake, which is happening at the last weekend in April, uh, the 26th, and it's going through till Monday. Uh, then we also have our Million Marijuana March, happens the first weekend in May. Uh, it's May 5th. We'll be gathering at Summer and Center Streets uh, at about 11 o'clock. We'll march at high noon. All righty, I'll be there, and thank you for all your hard work. Okay, Happy well, thank 4th you for your support. Money. Yeah. Thanks for the call. Eugene's Bye. having a march, too. Yes. <laughs> for those from that area. <laughs> for the people in Eugene, Yeah. they're in Portland, they're in Salem, they're in Eugene. Everybody We're all over the world. Go. Yes. Actually, 250 cities around the world That's this amazing. year. We've had years where we've had uh, 300 plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a, a year, uh, you know, for the, the women to step up. It's the 100 year anniversary of the suffrage. And uh, something to point out uh, LD was the first woman to join the CIND program. And Ellen uh, is hopefully going to be the first women attorney general in uh, Oregon. So, that'd be nice. A couple of firsts here on yes. the centennial. A lot of the things that we're discussing here tonight are very important to you because today the medical cannabis might not mean nothing to you because you're not sick. Tomorrow you, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your best friend, somebody in your personal circle is going to go through hell. I mean it's like PTSD. Today we are trying at the Mercy Center to get PTSD added as a condition but we need help. Can somebody out there give us a call, give us some support? We need some help to make this happen. This is very important. We got all these people coming back from all these wars, and everybody tells me every day at that office that they need help, mm -hmm. every day. And you know what, this is what we got going, this TV show, and we need some help so we can make that happen, and everybody we know all has PTSD. And it's so important for that. Absolutely. Hey, President Obama, didn't he say that uh, PTSD was to be considered one of the illnesses that was? Somebody did from the federal government. They That's were, been included now. What I heard about it is they were accepting the fact that they weren't going against it. Uh, so they were allowing it. It was mm. like they were allowing the vets to use yeah. it. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. My understanding was there was a directive issued through the Veterans <laughs> Administration to say, uh, no longer uh, deny them their uh, benefits and other things when right, they tested positive right. for uh, cannabis or marijuana, as we refer. You know, and that's uh, that's happy news for 420. You know, we had so, yeah. we've had so little happy happy news here. Uh, so yeah, good thing we had our our gathering down there at the steps of the Capitol of Salem at 420. We had a modest crowd. We updated the folks there. Uh, LV was. Uh, 
was there to help. And um, can I quickly say thank you to all of those who participated on Not a Penny on 420. I love you all too. Right on, right that on. That was next year. It will be much bigger, and you'll know about it through this show. Sure. Well, let's yeah, let's talk about it a little bit. It was the 420 strike, and the what was first annual 420 strike is the idea is that the majority we are really the largest minority in this country, if not a very a part of a large majority. Reason I know that to be true is because. I have been to every state in this union, including Alaska and Hawaii. I know of no place that has no room in their heart for marijuana, and, and that the economy is affected by cannabis, hemp, marijuana, even with the prohibitions. But still, everybody is so terrified. First, it was the Marijuana Tax Act. The Supreme Court didn't really agree with that. So Nixon got Schaefer, he, their friends, to go and write a bad report, which they couldn't, because anyone that studies cannabis understands that it's not, not addictive, not a gateway drug. All of the lies go away by knowledge. So he didn't like it, and, and this, so now we're living with a lie called the Substance Control Act, and that is the lie we live under. And that just says that marijuana has no additional value in the United States. Well, then what am I doing in this medical program that at one time had at least 18 of us, had approved 36 more, and everyone that's ever entered this program has had to be approved by FDA, DEA, and NIDA. And all of us had to have extensive medical records, which our doctors were really not encouraged to keep. Uh, <laughs> we were supposed to prove to those agencies that, that uh, with extensive medical records, that marijuana was the most efficient, the most reliable, and the safest part of our treatment. How many other medicines could we have met those regulations from? And yet everyone who entered this program was able to prove that. That's why my prescription is hemp cannabis, or as they call it, marijuana. Well, a lot of people say, you know what, I've heard things mostly bad, mm -hmm. and I've heard some recently that things are good. And the real deal is this, you need to look into it because a lot of people are suffering. You feel like, man, I just gotta suffer. You don't have to suffer. There is hope. People, people are feeling so bad with their quality of life today. I hear all that, you know, all the time. All the time, yeah. And you know what, oh. the, all of the things that people are going through are not necessary because you can eat yeah. some cookies, you can eat some pancakes, you can eat some candy, whatever you can tolerate, you can put cannabis in, the oils, you can rub them in topically, you can smoke them, you can vaporize them, and you know what, people, the relief that is given is so surprising that it makes everybody just wanna go, where do I sign up? Because I gotta tell people about right. how amazing quality well, I think that the most, one of the most fascinating and best things about being in Oregon and being a marijuana patient here, particularly, is that doctors are seeing people really documenting ca even cancer cases that are no longer in their bodies, right. things like this. That's amazing things, but they are being documented. The other thing Excellent. that I, and the majority of the people are up 50 and older, so you can't just say that it's just these kids out there trying to get high. Hey, they were getting high before there was ever medical marijuana, if that's what they wanted to do. Come on. Well, and one of the things you brought up is But the, the seniors cancer. give up all this. This is my only medicine other than two eye drops. Wow. But nothing for my uh, arthritis, whichever senior has to deal with sooner or later. My breathing is just fine. I mean, I'm a picture of health, and I'm 72 years old, for Pete's sake. Excellent. So he hasn't yeah. gotten reefer madness. No, hasn't had the brain cell killers, the the dead monkey uh, routine they no, did on folks many years ago. I did gain four pounds last year. Hey. <laughs> well, that's an appetite but thing. I mean, it's not necessarily no, bad. But I mean, no, but I mean, I don't want to be skinny. Yeah, that will just get me a wrinkle at this stage. You know, I'm okay. Excellent. Well, you know, and, and the, the the there's the you know reefer madness myth exposed. It says it causes cancer, and here you know folks are. You know, and, and causes the other things, and here, you know, are still surviving. And well, that's one of the things, Perry. A lot of people probably never heard about what if cannabis cured cancer. <gasps> exactly. Can we, you know, for you that haven't heard of this, there is serious, serious research done on this. And if you need to find out about it, Perry, where could they find out about that at? Well, they can stop at www.mercycenters.org, where we have the 
links to uh, Race from the Cure uh, and other uh, information okay. along those lines. Uh, most uh, important, the uh, studies in Spain where this research is going on unhindered by federal interference and they're finding out that this uh, the cannabinoids uh, affect to decrease the glioma or brain cancer in mice you know that's actually attacking it directly and getting rid of it and you know we, we've known for a long time what a part of it is to uh, as part of the therapy you know with the with the appetite and pain and nausea and other things but to, and if that was part of a whole body thing, it like, you know, got your white cells to really, you know, be, you know, be their best, but more, they may, it may actually attack the cancer itself. Mm -hmm. And only when we end the war are we gonna find this out. So everybody out there, register, vote, and get everybody you know to do so also. And uh, consider every candidate, dog catcher on up, uh, ask them on the issue. Here's something important happening, and you can get it through the internet, and it is patients out of time are having the best international oh, right. conference you ever can attend in the United States, because it is those international doctors from Spain, from Israel, mm -hmm. from all over the United States, and it's put on by the Nurses Association and the San Francisco Physicians, and it's happening this coming week. If you cannot attend in Tucson, Arizona, mm -hmm. you can take the course on the internet and be accredited for it, so get on it immediately, please. Yes, there's a, a chance for uh, nurses and others to get their continuing uh, medical education uh, credits uh, just by uh, going online. They can do this online. So at least you can get the information to apply to your patients here in the uh, Oregon area. And we're constantly getting calls from local clinics and stuff. Uh, they want some more information. They can't sign for their patient, but uh, they want them to get signed. So they want us to help with the process and all. So it's a beautiful thing. And we hope it continues. And we, we thanks for your uh, your uh, part in doing that. We're so glad you moved here to, to Oregon. And, uh, Hello, Oregon. Get to take a part in the program and be active, though. You know, and that's enough. Not enough folks are active with the program and, and helping to uh, to do the most they can from there. So it's good to have you here as an example. Then. Well, and it's not only that because the people that are watching the show, a lot of them are looking for some hope. We have now just gave them some hope right. for those that are seeing you mm -hmm. and understanding that, you know what, I have a possibility of changing the quality of my life and at least I can see that it's going to change because it's not just a story somebody told me. Well, she can see it's going to change because <laughs> she was did. supposed to be blind by <laughs> medical, <laughs> but medical cannabis. Stop that. And that's in direct contradiction to what she was told by current uh, professional medical the science. The story of my life is ignorance blinds us. Big U.S. on that one. So we're yeah. very glad that she's here, and uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we have more on her story, how to make contact, uh, how to get her on uh, interview, and, and have her bring her on your show, please. And uh, more about cannabis as medicine, how to get with the program here in Oregon, um, how to find resources like the Wednesday night meeting happens every Wednesday, 7 p.m., 1469 Capitol Street, right there next to the Arctic Circle, and uh, more events that are happening. Um, best methods for medicating, matching up growers to patients, uh, all the things that the community needs. That's what we're up to. And every Friday night, every Friday night, call in, ask your questions. You can find out anything you need to find out and see what guests we have on for next week. Absolutely, and so we'll see you all uh, next Friday at 7 p.m. Thanks again, LV, for coming on our show. My pleasure, it's wonderful to be back in Salem. Always yeah, great yeah, to meet your legislators. It's always a very high thrill for me. Good. To be and a part of your you know, political scene here. You wanna say anything before I turn it off, Glenn? Yes, good night. Good night. God bless you all, every single one of you.